Hi, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to set up your IP camera. In this video, there is no NVR. You've bought the camera and now you want to connect it to your network and set up the camera directly. That means in this setup, I will not be using an NVR. I'll just be using the cameras directly. I'll be recording my footage directly onto an SD card. There's an SD card. And then I'll also demonstrate how to set up the remote view so you can directly connect to your camera via your cell phone using the app. You'll be able to connect to your camera while you're on the same network or while on a remote network connecting over the internet. Now all of these IP cameras are using software version 4.0. So it doesn't matter if it's this camera or this camera or a bullet camera. The process is the same for all of these DAWA cameras. Now in order to connect to your cameras, you will need a power over ethernet switch. He has a small one and he has a much larger one. It doesn't matter which type of switch you've got, as long as each port provides you with a 12 volt to feed the camera. However, if you are not going to be using a power over ethernet switch, you will need a standalone DC supply, which will be connected here. In this video, I'll be using the power over ethernet switch as the power source. I'll just be using the small power over ethernet switch, but you can see these switches come in different shapes and sizes. Right, now the first thing I'm going to do is insert the SD card. This one requires two star screws to be opened. Now, if you're using a zoom camera, you would have opened these two torque screws and then you can insert your SD card over there. If you're gonna be using the smaller camera, the SD card slots in like this. Notice it is face up. Now, if you're installing this on your site, you'd use this IP rated seal. But for now, I'm just going to plug in my ethernet cable and I'm now gonna plug the other side into my power over ethernet switch. Now, if you want to set this up directly using a laptop, for example, I would then plug in my ethernet cable into my laptop and then that would go into one of the power over ethernet ports or on a power over ethernet switch like this, it must go in the data port over there. Now, in this case, you would need to locate the camera by putting in the default IP address in the web browser. I'll still demonstrate that. However, many people have already set up a network. You've already got a network, you've, maybe you've got a router on that network. So what we'd need to do is connect that power over ethernet switch to the router. So I'm now plugging in a cable to this little power over ethernet switch. So that means that I've got my laptop, which is connected to my router. Maybe it was already like that, but now my router needs to be connected to the switch, which this new camera is going to be also connected to. Remember that the camera is already connected to the switch. If you are feeding your camera with a DC and it's getting its power from another source, well, then you can plug your camera directly into your router because it will be getting its power from its own power source, for example. Now, many people have more than one camera, so all you would do is you would plug in each one of your cameras into your power over ethernet switch, and you're limited only by how many ports you have. So if you've got an eight port power over ethernet switch, you could have eight standalone cameras connected to that power over ethernet switch. Now the camera will work and it will record, and you will be able to view footage directly on this camera via your laptop. But if you wanna view footage while you're in a remote location, maybe in a different city, and you want to see that footage from your local network, your router that is connected to that network needs to have internet access, which means your camera must be able to get onto the internet and it will get onto the internet via your router, either via fiber, ADSL, maybe 4G or maybe 5G. So I'm assuming that your setup will be like this, camera connected to power over ethernet switch and at some point there's a router connected to the switch allowing your camera to access the internet. Now my camera is just sitting on my desk. So what's in front of the camera are these batteries. So these batteries are just sitting in front of the camera. So when I log into the camera, you'll see these two C batteries sitting here. Now I'm gonna go onto my computer and show you how I access this camera while it's on this network. Right now I'm on a computer that is connected to the same network that that brand new camera is connected to. And now what I need to do is put in the camera's default IP address. That is the address 192.168.1.108. So I've typed that in and what will happen is it will go nowhere. Now why I'm doing this is I'm just showing you that it's not taking me to the login of the camera because I'm not on, I'm not in the same IP range as the camera's IP address. What that means is that networks work in a way that your IP address of your local computer needs to be within the same range as the IP camera that you're trying to connect to. So in this case, it says the connection has timed out. Now I'll quickly show you the network settings. So on a Windows computer, I'm clicking over here and then I go to network and internet settings. 
and then I say Ethernet, and now I say Change Adapter Options. Now it brings up all my interfaces. Now in this case, I'm looking at my Ethernet connection. Now you can do this using your Wi-Fi interface, so you can also double click and change your Wi-Fi IP address. But in this case, I have an Ethernet cable plugged in, so I'm just going to be reconfiguring the Ethernet IP settings. So I'm now going to double click on this. Now on my computer, I've actually got two Ethernet ports. So I'm just going to uh, double click on the port that has a Ethernet cable plugged in. So when I double click it, I can go to the properties menu and over here it says Internet Protocol version 4 and I double click on it and at the moment it's showing that it's all grayed out. Now this is a very common setup. What has happened here is my computer is given an IP address from the router that is on this network. Maybe your computer is connected to a server and therefore it is given an IP address from a DHCP process running on that server. Now I should quickly check what my IP address is because that will give me an idea of the network that I'm on. So what I do is I do a search and I say CMD. Then it brings up the command prompt. Now I say IP config and over here it's brought up my IP address. There it is. It says 192.168.8.7. Now the default IP address of the camera is 192.168.8.7. .108. So immediately there's a problem. I'm on the 8 network and the camera is on the 1 network. So I need to change my IP address in order for me to actually even view that camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hop off this network and change my IP address just for a short time. But while I'm here, I also want to show you the default gateway. Notice it says 192.168.8.1. That is the address that allows my computer to access the internet. A little bit later, I'll be using that address again. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to manually change my address to 192.168.1. And now I can choose any number between 1 and 254. So I can be number 1. So I'm just going to choose 100. So the camera is 108. Now all I need to do is just fill in the subnet mask or just click on it and it auto completes. Now I just say OK. Now because this default gateway is is saying 192.168.8.1, it's gonna come up with a problem, but it doesn't matter, I can just say okay. It's telling me that there's a problem, but I can just say okay, okay, and it's fine, I can move on. If yours does not allow you to move on, just change this address here to be in the same range. There, I just changed that eight to a one, and then I say yes. Now say OK. Now I can leave this open, but what I can do now is go straight to my web browser and there is the camera's default IP address. The reason why I say default is the camera that arrives in the packaging and never been initialized before has this address, 192.168.1.108. If the camera has been used on someone else's network, you're gonna find that this address is probably different. So this is for a brand new camera out of the box. So now I'm just going to try and relaunch that page and look at that, immediately I can now access that page. So what I'm gonna do now is walk you through the steps of initializing this camera. Normally the NVR would do this for us, but because there's no NVR on this network, I'm going to do this manually. Also note that my computer no longer has internet access. The reason being is that I'm on a different network to the network of my router. Now, yes, they're all plugged into the same equipment, but the IP addresses put me in a different network now. So my router can no longer see my computer. So during this time, you won't have internet connectivity. So I'm just gonna choose my region. Right, so I've chosen my region and obviously the language. Now I say next. Now it's gonna ask you to agree to some terms and conditions, next. Now it's gonna ask you for your date format, right? So that's country specific and that's personal. And then it's gonna ask you for your time zone. So I've put in my time zone, you can also sync your PC and I can just say next. Now it's gonna ask you for your password. Now it's already completed the username as admin. That is a built-in account which I cannot change at this point. Now I must come up with a complicated password. Right, so now I must just confirm that password. So I've confirmed my password and now I'm also going to put my email address. It's very important to put your email address here because if you need to recover your password, they'll email you a link and that makes it much easier to recover the password without having to reset the camera. If you are locked out of the camera, in order to reset it means you have to climb up the ladder or go wherever the camera is installed and press that reset button. So in this case, it's easier to use your email address because if you need to reset the password, it is much easier. 
Right, so put your email address and then type next. Now it will initialize the device and then it just says to you peer to peer. That is what we're gonna use later to set up the remote viewing on the cell phone. Now it's just saying where you can get the app. So if you scan this, you can go and find the Dawa app in the App Store or the Play Store. I will still show you that. For now, I can just ignore this. You can decide if you want auto updates on or off. Now it's gonna ask me for the very username and password I've just created. Now I'm logging into the camera and I should see those two batteries that are on the table. There we go. So there I told you the camera is facing directly at those batteries. So now I've logged into the camera and if I want to change some settings here, I go to settings. Now in order to get the recording done and the remote view, I need to do it at the camera. So if I go to video, it's asking me the encoding method. So you can set your resolution. Maybe you want it on the maximum. And then the bit rate, maybe you want it on the highest. Keeping in mind that a higher bit rate is going to use up more of that SD card. You can also set the substream, which is the stream which you will view on your cell phone. Keeping in mind that higher resolution and higher bit rate means more data used on your cell phone. Now I can say save. Now it's asking me for the overlay and I can also give the camera a name. Channel title, it says IPC and I'm going to call this test. Right, so I've set the encoding. Now I can go to event and now just ensure that the video detection is enabled. Without it enabled, it will not record anything. So I'm enabling it and I can set up the times when it is enabled. Right, so it has been set up. And then don't forget to say save. Now you can even set up a smart plan and some intelligent video surveillance rules. For example, you can add a tripwire. So if these batteries, for example, move across this green line, it will initiate an alarm or it will record, etc. Right, I have detailed videos explaining all of this stuff. I'm just going to move on to the storage. I'm not going to have a smart plan for now, so I did not save that. Now I'm coming to storage. Now the storage, I need to set the schedule. Am I going to be using alarm recording? There you can see it's in the red. Am I going to be using event recording or general recording? So you can see that I can just select that. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the mouse and just dragging it. Why are all three colors here? Because I've now ticked general event and alarm if I don't want general recording that means it's recording all the time and if I don't want alarm recording I just check those two uh, and then I highlight the section again it removes it and if I only want event recording now I can just highlight Sunday for event recording only right so for now I'm just going to default that and I'm going to just say general so that means it's going to record all the time now keeping in mind that this is only an SD card so it's going to fill up very quickly so I'm just going to say save so it means that from now it should be recording all the time although it's only for Sunday in this example so if I go to the playback which is over here and I do a little search there's the date and I look for the footage that's available. It's showing me immediately here on the side. Do you want to see general? Do you want to see event? Do you want to see alarm? Uh, for example, so if I say all of the recording, there it is. If I say event, for example, uh, there were some earlier recordings which took place on that memory card. So it's still coming up. And if I show general, it will start filling up from now. There's the first general recording. I can download it if I want to. There you can see it's bringing up a option to download it. I don't want to do that. I want to play it. So I'm just going to double click on it. And there we should see those same batteries. Okay, so there's the recording. It's all set up. And now quickly, I'll show you the alarm function. You can set up a little alarm for motion detection, disk error, uh, video tamper, disk fill, IVS. Obviously, that would be the tripwire. Now what I need to do is make sure that this camera is on the network correctly. For example, if I look at the TCIP address, there's the address 192.168.1.18. That is the default IP address. So I need to change this to my IP address range. So I'm going to change it to an 8. Remember that my IP address range was 192.168.8. So I need to change this camera to 192.168.8 and then you need to choose any IP address that is available on that network. So that means you have to have some knowledge of your network. So if I, for example, choose a 7 there, that would be a clash because earlier I showed that my local computer was 192.168.8.7. So that would be an IP conflict. So I need to choose an available address. In this case, I'm going to choose 199. 
Now in your network, you may have completely different IP addresses. Your IP address might be 10.0.0. whatever. So I'm just using 192.168.8 because my router's on that range. So that is why I chose those IP addresses. Obviously in your network, you will adapt it according to the router's IP address. And that is why you need to know your router's IP address. Now, if you have 10 more cameras to be installed, then maybe you can call it 199, 200, 201, 202, 203, 4, etc. Now, there's a subnet mask. Now, the default gateway is very important. This is the router's IP address. You need to give the IP address of your router here. So earlier I showed the IP address of my router. That is what is allowing me to leave my network. That is why it's called the gateway, walk out of the gate. So that means I can now exit my network through the gateway and the IP address of my router on this network is 192.168.8.1. That means that I'm not changing the IP address, which was 192.168.1.108 to dot eight. Dot one nine nine, and then I've also changed the gateway to dot eight dot one. Where did I get this from? Recall this was from the IP configuration. This is my router's IP address, my router's IP address. There it says default gateway. That is the IP address of your router if you want to log into your router. So that's the address you need to put here on the IP camera. Now the DNS, you can leave it like this with all these eights here. That is a service provided by Google. Or what you could do is put your router's IP address. If you leave all these eights here and the remote view does not work on the phone, then what I recommend you do is you change the preferred DNS to your default gateway, which means it will be 192, in my case, .168.8. one. So you can also do that. That often solves some problems. Now, in my case, both will work, so I don't have to change that. And what I'm going to do is say save. Now, immediately when I do this, I won't be able to access this camera. So remember this camera address. If you forget this address, there's another way of finding this camera, but it is more involved. It requires a software called Smart Config. I have a video showing how to locate a camera or NVR that is kind of lost on the network. So over here, I know this address. I'm going to be using 8.199. And I can say save. Watch what happens. I'm going to lose connectivity to this camera now. For example, it's saying there busy. It says setting busy. So after a while, yes, there it says the connection has timed out. So now it has automatically changed the address. Look at that. It says 192.168.8.199. It's actually prompting me for the new address. And if I try and go to it, it won't allow me. It'll also say connection has timed out. And the reason being is that I now need to change my local computer back to the eight network. So I'm going to go back to the network settings, properties, double click here. And remember that I chose the one in order to get access to that camera to get onto that network. Now what I can do is I can either choose eight like that, or I can just allow my router to allocate me an IP address automatically, which is fine because the router will automatically allocate me an IP address within the same range as this camera because this is now on the eight network. Right. So what I need to do now is I just refresh the page and look at that. Boom. So now I can log in to the camera now on the new IP address. So once I log in, I can just prove to you. There we go. I'm now logged into that camera. All I need to do now is set up the remote. Now on the side here, it says settings, and now I can go to network. When I go to the network option, over here it says access platform. This may also say P2P, peer-to-peer. -peer. Now, as soon as I click this, it is going to show me a QR code. Now, that QR code is private because if I show you the QR code, you could scan that QR code and then get access to my camera if you have my password. Now, this QR code may also be found on the camera in some instances. And also, if you just have the serial number of the camera, you can also access the camera but may not necessarily log in. You still need to know the password. So for ultimate security, don't show anyone your QR code or your serial number. So when I click on access platform, it's now showing me my serial number, which is I've intentionally blurred out and then it also has the QR code. So what I need to do now is to take a photo of this or at this point take my camera and scan this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm now going to revert back to the desktop camera and show you how I set this up on the phone.
Now I'm in the Play Store and I'm using an Android platform. You can obviously use your other platforms and I'm doing a search for Dawa CCTV app. Even if you just say Dawa, it'll come up. So I'll just say Dawa and there we go. Now it'll show many apps in the list. Now a few of these work. Make sure it is from Dawa Technology Company Limited. And in this case, you could use the GDMSS Plus or the Lite or the HD. It's totally up to you. So in my case, I've already installed the Plus, so I'll just open the app. Now I already have devices here, so I'm just going to add additional one. So what I'm going to do is it's asking me serial number, IP or online. Recall that I showed the serial number or scan option. So I just say serial number or scan. Now notice how it's trying to scan the table. Now what I would do is I'll take my phone and go and scan that QR code, which is on display on my computer screen right now. So that's what I'm going to do. Right now it has found my serial number and I've just covered it for privacy reasons. Now I say next. Now it is asking me, is it an NVR, a wireless camera, wired camera? So in this case, it was a wired camera. Now it's asking me for the device name. So I can quickly put a name here. I'm just gonna call this 199. And then it's asking me for the password. The username is admin and now I put in the password. Now I just want to do a final check. I want to make sure that I'm on the same network. Now notice my Wi-Fi is on and my phone is connected to the same network that the camera is connected to. Maybe your router has a Wi-Fi connection. Well, then your phone would need to be connected to that Wi-Fi connection in order to enable the remainder of the setting. So I just say save. Now it's going to try and locate that camera on your network and it already did as you can see uh, there's the camera and there's the batteries all right so there's the remote view notice now I'm moving those batteries along and you can see the footage directly on the phone now you might be wondering what if you're not on the same network well once it has paired with the camera you can now leave the network and stream directly from your cellular service provider for example what I'm going to do now is switch off my Wi-Fi so that means I'm now going to my cellular network. Notice I do not have connectivity to the camera. But if I just relaunch it, it is now going to locate that camera via my cellular connection. It even gave a little warning there just telling me about the data and how much data it's going to use. And notice the only change is now the delay. You'll see that it is a bit slower in getting that footage. All right, so there we see the remote view working, whether I'm on the network or not on the network. And then obviously from the app, you've got additional features. You can set it to record manually, you can set it to take photos, and then you can also look at some playback, for example, some of the recordings that took place. There's lots of things you can do here. The setup is now complete in terms of getting started. That brings me to the end of the video. Good luck with your installation. Thanks for watching and cheers.